Okay, in this video, we're going to look at how to plan practicals that you haven't done before. Okay, so this one is used to find acceleration due to gravity. As you can see, you've got some cylinder on a slope and it's going to roll down. The distance between the cylinder and the light gate is S and it's inclined at some angle theta. And here's an equation that links it. So V is the speed at uh, which it goes to the light gate. You've got a G, which is a gravitational field strength, which you're trying to find. S is the distance there, sine theta, the angle, and 3. Okay, so we're going to describe and explain a method that a student can do to find G. Okay, so first step is to identify the quantity that we're interested in finding. So we're trying to find G. The next step is to identify the things that we can change, the independent variable, and things that we can measure, the dependent variable. So in this case, I could change S yes, or I can change theta. I'm going to go for theta. I'm going to change the incline of this slope. Okay, next we need to keep identify what needs to be kept constant. So if I'm changing theta and to keep everything else constant, so I'm going to keep s as constant i'm going to keep them use the same rolling cylinder and so on okay then i need to figure out what i'm going to plot because at the end of the day in physics we want to put a straight line and you're going to use the gradient or the intercept to get the information we want so what am i going to say i'm going to write the equation line y equals mx plus c and i'm going to draw the axis here so what i could do is i could plot v squared the final velocity which i can get from the light gate uh, and the y-axis and on the x-axis i because i'm changing the angle theta I'm actually going to plot sine theta. Okay, so if I plot those in the axes, I'll get a straight line that actually goes to the origin because there's nothing being added there, so there's no y-intercept. And the gradient is going to equal the thing that's multiplying the sine theta, the thing that's multiplying the x-axis, which is 4g s over 3. So next I need to think about other quantities I'll need in order to find g. So clearly in this equation, I'll need to find s. So that's another quantity that I'm going to have to measure. Okay, so I'm going to use a ruler to measure s. And then consider how you'd process the data. So even though we've got the gradient, we haven't actually explained how we get the acceleration due to gravity, g. So we're going to rearrange this. So we're going to do gradient times 3 divided by 4 uh, and divided by s, which is the distance we just measured. And that will give us the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, and then we can think about all the ways to minimize uh, the uncertainty in our measurements. So for example, if we use a really small s, then there's going to be large uncertainty in the measurement of s okay so if we measure small quantities we'll have a large percentage uncertainty at the same time if we use a really large uh, s then by the time it gets to the bottom is going to be uh, there might be some air resistance which is going to affect g as well okay in this example we've got a ball that's rolling back and forth inside a curved bowl um, a student suggests that the amplitude of the oscillation a should vary with elapsed time t according to the equation a equals a naught e to minus lambda t where a naught is amplitude at t equals zero and lambda is a constant describe and explain what the student must do to check if the suggested relationship is correct and determine lambda okay so firstly a is the amplitude at different points in time so as this uh, goes back and forth it rolls back up and down the amplitude is going to decrease because it's going to lose energy so it's going to get um the so a is going to decrease with time so Okay, so how are we going to plan this practical? So first we're going to identify the quantities that we're interested in finding. So here we can find lambda, that's what we're mainly interested in, but we can also find A0 using this uh, experiment here. Okay, so first, secondly, we're going to identify the thing that we're going to change. So as time changes, we're going to measure the amplitude, ca capital A, at different points in time. Okay, things that need to be kept constant. So if we repeat this experiment, we're going to make sure we release it from the same initial amplitude. And we're going to keep the surface the same and the ball the same. Okay, what are we going to plot? Okay, that's the hard part. Okay, to figure out what to plot, I'm going to look at this equation. And I'm going to compare it to y equals mx plus c because I want a straight line. And the first thing to do is to actually take natural logs on both sides. Okay, and then using your log rules, you can separate the terms inside the log on the right-hand side. And then using, again, your log rules, that actually just sim simply becomes minus lambda t on the right there. So then I'm going to rearrange this in a way that's a bit easier to compare so here if i plot on my y-axis l and a on my x-axis if i plot t then my gradient will be minus lambda and my y-intercept will be ln a naught okay now i've got that i'm going to put those on the axis there ln a against t and that should give me a negative gradient line and we need to see if i need any other variables in order to determine lambda i don't okay in this case i don't need to measure anything else really Okay, and then I need to explain how I would process this data to find lambda and uh, a naught. Okay, so first the gradient is equal to minus lambda. 
Okay, so that means I just need to do minus of the gradient to get lambda. And then the y-intercept is equal to ln a naught. So what I need to do actually do is e to the power of the y-intercept to get a naught. Okay, so how can we minimize uncertainty in our measurements? So firstly, I would use a sufficiently large amplitude. Okay, so the initial amplitude needs to be large enough that it can be measured with a small percentage uncertainty. And as, as it back, oscillates back and forth, I would probably use a video camera because the oscillations might be too quick to record what's going on and then take the measurements from there. And finally, I would repeat this experiment multiple times and take an average. In this example, a student is measuring the intensity of electromagnetic radi waves emitted from a hot object. She believes the intensity of the radiation I is related to the absolute temperature T by the equation I equals alpha T to the power of N, where alpha and N are constants. Describe the and explain what the student must do to determine alpha and N. Okay, so to plan this experiment, you need to think about what you're interested in finding. So you want to find alpha and N. What can you change? Well, you can change the temperature of the object itself. Okay, so you can heat it and cool it down and measure the corresponding intensity of the radiation using some detector. Okay, and then what it needs to be kept constant, obviously it needs to be the same object and so on. Other conditions need to be kept constant depending on the actual setup. And then you think about what you need to plot. Okay, that's the important part here. So first thing, I need to get a straight line. Okay, so take the equation and compare it to the equation of a line. Okay, in this case, we're going to change i and t and n and, and alpha are unknown. So the best case here is to take logs on both sides. You can take any base log, but I'm going to take, uh, take the uh, log base 10. Okay, and then using my log rules, I'm going to separate those into that, and the n comes to the front like so. And I'm going to compare it directly to my y equals mx plus c uh, equation. So what I could do is I could plot log of the intensity that I measure, uh, on the y-axis. On the x-axis, I can plot log of the absolute temperature in Kelvin there. Okay, so that should give me, uh, the gradient should be n, the power of the t. And then my y-intercept should, should be log alpha. Okay, I'm going to describe how I'm going to process data. So I'm going to plot log i against log t, and that's going to give me a straight line with some kind of uh, intercept. Okay, the gradient is going to equal the n, and the y-intercept is going to equal log of alpha. So that means that if I do log 10 to the power of the y-intercept, because I use log base 10, I will get alpha there. Okay. I don't need any other information to uh, analyze this data. And to minimize uncertainty, well, it really does depend on the setup. And I don't have enough information on the setup here, so I can't really comment on that.